Coming up on today's episode of Airborne Unlimited, Columbine 2 takes to the sky, Buzz Aldrin's ideas for getting to Mars. That's all brother, restoration continuing. I'm Brie Cross, it's March 21st, 2016, and this is Airborne Unlimited. Last week, we reported that the team working in Arizona to restore the Lockheed Constellation Columbine 2 to airworthy condition was nearly ready to ferry the plane to its new home in Virginia, where the restoration will be completed. President Eisenhower's Columbine 2 was the first presidential airplane to use the call sign Air Force One. Things must be progressing well because it's reported the Connie just made a baby hop of 29 minutes on Sunday in preparation for its flight to Virginia. The Columbine 2 was the third airplane in a line of special service military versions of standard airplanes to be used for presidential transportation. The first airplane assigned by the military for President Roosevelt was a custom version of the militarized DC-4 that did not have an official name, but it was commonly referred to as the Sacred Cow. President Truman's customized version of a DC-6 was named Independence, but neither of these aircraft carried the call sign of Air Force One. We at ANN are pleased to see this important piece of aviation history take to the skies again. Astronaut Edwin Aldrin, better known to everyone as Buzz Aldrin, the second man to walk on the moon, says that 2040 would be a good target for launching a manned mission to Mars. However, he's adding a few years to NASA's forecast of 2035. Aldrin told Fox News that he would like to see the president make a commitment to a manned Mars mission in 2019, which would be the 50th anniversary of the first moon landing. He said, quote, if you look two decades from there, you come up with about 2039, so I round up to 2040. In Aldrin's opinion, humans could have landed on Mars moon Phobos, which would be a place to check out the habitation and other factors necessary for moving on to Mars. He envisions a constant presence on Mars with rotating crews, like those that currently serve aboard ISS, but the missions will necessarily be much longer because of the travel time to Mars is about six months. Aldrin said, quote, all in all, it's pretty close to a three-year mission. After the break, historic C-47 restoration is progressing. Concorde's recombinant gas RG series sealed battery technology produces a high performance battery with the advantages of being pre-tested and fully charged at the factory. Find out more about Concorde's entire line of batteries at www.concordbattery.com. Concorde, the heart of your aircraft. There's a difference between charting a steady course and pushing for the ceiling. And for nearly a century, Hartzell Propeller has been defining that difference. It's in our passion for engineering and research and our dedication to testing the limits of performance. We are built on honor. We are Hartzell Propeller. Welcome back. If you would like to be a supporter of Airborne Unlimited, send an email to jim at aero-news.net. The restoration of any World War II era aircraft is special, but to restore one that actually took place in the D-Day invasion sets the bar higher. That's the case in the restoration of a C-47 named That's All Brother. Work began in earnest in November of last year at Basler Turbo Conversions in Oshkosh, Wisconsin, and progress is being made according to the CAF website dedicated to the effort. The first portion of the work is what is being called the heavy engineering phase and will continue through this year. This will address the major mechanical and structural issues. The most time-consuming and expensive task during the first phase is dealing with airframe corrosion. Their website reports that the team is seeking parts that will help in the completion phase of the restoration. The group gives thanks to Basler Turbo Conversions, the EAA, and others who have provided parts. They also say their Kickstarter fund has made a positive difference. The group has set a goal of taking the airplane, which was the first to cross over into Normandy on D-Day, back to Normandy for the 75th anniversary of the invasion in 2019. Each week, we share with you an online video that one of our viewers found especially entertaining. We call it our Aero Video of the Week. Final lift off. Ground crew hand signals can be critically important in the safety of airplane taxi operations. This crew chief not only provides explicit and clearly understandable signals, he adds a touch of theater while he's doing it. Search Dancing Crew Chief at Work on YouTube. After these messages, Lockheed Martin continues work on hypersonic flights.
Redbird Flight Simulations is dedicated to revolutionizing flight training by designing, manufacturing, and delivering affordable and innovative flight training technologies. Each Redbird device is designed to enhance the training experience for pilots of all levels, from student to ATP. Redbird is quickly becoming the industry standard for flight training. Since Redbird introduced its revolutionary FMX in 2007, colleges, universities, and flight training operations around the world have integrated Redbird products into their curriculum. It's time to discover what Redbird can do for you. Join the migration. Sandia introduces the new SAI 340 Quattro TSO'd airspeed, attitude, altitude, and slip. With integral backup battery, safety never looked so good. See it now at www.sandia.aero. Welcome back. With so much news coming out of the aviation industry, we're summarizing some other interesting stories in a brief segment we call Around the Patch. The Lockheed Martin Corporation says it's continuing to develop a military aircraft with speeds of up to Mach 6 to respond to security threats more quickly than conventional aircraft. They say the unmanned aircraft would serve in a prompt global strike capacity. Dassault Aviation presented its fleet of Falcon Large Cabin Long Range Business Jets at India Aviation, India's largest civilian aviation exhibition. Dassault expects to be delivering its new Falcon 8X trijet to the Indian market shortly after certification this year. The FAA and key government agencies involved in unmanned aircraft operations are expanding participation in the Unmanned Aircraft Systems Executive Committee. The committee provides federal agencies with a forum to share information and resolve issues regarding UAS integration into the airspace system. The Independent Pilots Association is supporting an amendment to the FAA reauthorization bill to end the exclusion of cargo airline pilots from FAR Part 117. Under the existing exclusion, cargo pilots are not regulated for the same rest and duty requirements as passenger airline pilots. The International Women's Air and Space Museum will host its annual free community outreach program, Family Day, on April 9th. This year's theme is Record Breakers, featuring various records set by females in the aviation and aerospace fields. Well, that's the trip around the patch. Now let's move on to the rest of the news. The U.S. Senate passed a continuing resolution last week to extend funding for the FAA through mid-July. The FAA is currently funded under a continuing resolution through the end of the month. The bill passed in the Senate Thursday is different from the short-term funding measure passed previously by the House, according to the Associated Press. The two versions will need to be reconciled before final passage and signature by the President. Republicans in the U.S. House are still hopeful they can find some way to split air traffic control away from the FAA, creating a private, nonprofit corporation to run ATC. But the idea has received a great deal of pushback from the Democrats, as well as those in aviation who would be hit hard by proposed user fees intended to fund the nonprofit agency. Senate and House Easter recesses are staggered such that we expect it will be a while before we hear anything concrete about the final version of the continuing resolution. The staff at ANN is thinking about switching over to Congress work schedules. Well, that's our program for today. Remember to get comprehensive real-time 24-7 coverage of the latest aviation and aerospace stories anytime at aero-news.net. Remember that Airborne Unlimited is streamed daily Monday through Friday with additional breaking news bulletins for important stories that fall outside of our normal deadlines. Please join us in a growing roster of over 100 outstanding industry associations and organizations every weekday for the best in aviation and aerospace news from the staff of the Aero News Network, the aviation world's most comprehensive news and information resource.